We're all aware that our industry is complicated with many moving parts and many opportunities for things to go wrong resulting in harm to staff, equipment, and costs. Each piece of equipment that we operate has many things that can go wrong. Some events can be small and almost insignificant, while others can result in catastrophic outcomes. You know this and work hard to make sure that there are controls in place to prevent them. How do you know that the controls that are in place are the most effective? What do you focus on? The bow tie risk analysis is a visual approach to help identify the various critical controls. It's a tool that shows how various factors can lead to the loss of control hazards and the resulting consequences. It helps us identify those factors which are most critical, either because they prevent multiple threats from occurring or because the consequence of failure is high in terms of environment, processes, or workers. It involves bringing the right people together, supported by senior management, to make it happen. How does it work? Let's look at an example. We'll look at a particular piece of equipment, the hammer mill. A hazard of this equipment is the buildup of combustible dust, a top event that is a major unwanted event based on this hazard is ignition and explosion of the combustible dust. What are the threats or things that could occur to cause this top event? In this example, it might be a faulty spark sensor. So following this through, we see that if a spark sensor fails, the likelihood of the top event, ignition of combustible dust, increases. If the top event occurs, then there are consequences. This is the right-hand side of the bow tie. We look at all the potential consequences if the top event were to occur. This could be damage to workers, environment, equipment, or processes. Next, we analyze those things that we have put in place to prevent the threat from causing the top event, that is, the controls. There are controls that prevent the threat from occurring, for example, maintenance plans for testing the spark sensor, or mitigation controls to reduce the severity of the consequences, such as training in firefighting or first aid. Once we have built up a picture of all of the threats and their controls, we can look for those that are our critical controls. Once we have determined our critical controls, we then determine how the control itself could degrade. For example, if the control was a spark sensor and its alarm, what might interfere with it working correctly? What if the sensor becomes dirty and won't read properly? What if some of the spark sensors are offline already? We need to create controls that help prevent our critical controls from degrading. For example, we can make sure that there is regular preventative maintenance on the sensors, such as bi-weekly testing. We also need to make sure that our critical controls include a plan for how we track and report on these degradation factors. This plan includes all levels of the organization, from the operators to the administrative team. This has been a very high-level overview of critical factors, how we determine what they are, and how we control them to make sure that the top event does not occur. We will explore in more detail how you identify critical controls and manage them in other videos. Thank you. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.